Hi, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm a developer advocate for New Relic. What that means is I get to go around and meet people like you and see what you do with New Relic and share it with other people. So thank you for what you do. I appreciate it. Um, this talk is basically what we're learning from the use of Docker. We find it really interesting and we're data nerds, so we like to share what we learn. New Relic is in an interesting position in that we have a lot of our customers using Docker and we also use it internally for production. So I wanted to share some of the takeaways and the things that we got from it. So, am I? There we go. I introduced two grammatical errors to see if you can find, no, I'm kidding. Um, so how many people know the pets versus cattle analogy? Heads nodding, people not know it? Okay, no, okay. Good, I get to teach this, I love this. So um, what this is about is how people treat their servers. So in the olden days, people would treat their servers like pets. Um, they would name them, how many people have server named Gandalf somewhere? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, so you'd have one particular server that runs one application and you kind of become emotionally attached to it. And if it gets sick and it's not doing well, you put a lot of effort into making it better. Um, now with virtualization, what people do is they spin up servers, virtual servers, virtual machines as they need them. And then if there's a problem with it, you don't spend a lot of time troubleshooting. What you do is you just kill it and bring up another one. Um, now the next thing I'm talking about is bacteria, something that lasts a matter of minutes. So this is what we're seeing with a lot of Docker in the containerization space. Um, compared to a virtual machine, a container spins up much more quickly because it doesn't even have a VM to worry about. So it's interesting and that time um, adds up. So for those of you that are offended by this analogy, here's a field of non-GMO kale that you can look at and you can harvest the kale. Or I've heard um, paper plates versus fine china. That's another analogy. Somebody tried to talk me into elephants and ants, but I don't get it yet. I'll get back to you when that makes any sense to me. But uh, seriously, apology if that offends you. Um, but that's out in the um, ecosystem now. People are talking about it. So. Users of Docker that uh, use New Relic, we've been monitoring since March, and I know this number is old, but 8 million, s statistically significant. Uh, a large number of our, you guys are using containers, over 1,000 of our customers. And I have to say, standard disclaimer, it's early days. Uh, people were just mentioning in another session about the Gartner hype cycle and where Docker is. On, you know, It's just racketing up, and what was it, the time of, uh, over um, overinflated expectations. That's where we are, right? So it's going to go down the roller coaster. But it's very interesting, and I just wanted to share some of the things we've learned. So during the beta, so this is data nerd stuff. So this is log scale. So this is exponential number. And this is the age of the container in hours. So yes, we see a lot of containers that we think are originally used as virtual machines. That's not unusual. The first thing you do when you go to the container space is kind of lift and shift it in there. Um, but we looked at these numbers and said, wow, there are a lot of containers that aren't, very, aren't alive for a very long time. That's very interesting. So let's keep an eye on that. So 1.0 comes out, wow, almost half of the number of containers that people use are alive for less than an hour. So this is the age in hours. So we're like, wow, that's 3.8 million. That's a lot. If we look at it again, we drill down even further, we take a look, this is the age of containers in minutes. So 950,000 containers that are alive for less than a minute. Now part of that is it's a little bit too easy to spin up containers. I know you guys do that, because I've done it, but we did have a customer that accidentally went, oop, 30,000 containers, didn't really mean to do that. But we think there's more going on here, and we think it's really interesting because this has implications, right? Because in the past, you architected for something that would be around for 10 years, right? And now we're thinking of minutes, and now we're accelerating into seconds. So how are you gonna architect for something like that? Was anybody in Chris Richardson's session just a moment ago? That was really interesting. So microservices.io, if you wanna look at some of this stuff, he talks about it in a more abstract way where he talks about microservices patterns where you kinda remove yourself from what the exact technology is and think about what job you're trying to get done so you don't get into the religious holy wars of what's the best technology to use, which I think is really interesting. So 
what we've learned is the trend is definitely confirmed. Um, people are using containers re to replace VMs, but there's also, so they're kind of long-lived containers. But we're also seeing this really interesting thing that um, very short amount of time. So from the other perspective, we use Docker. New Relic used Docker in production for about a year and a half. So we are definitely an early adopter. We were a monolithic Rails app, and now we've moved to microservices. And we are definitely big believers. We are using Docker containers in production, and we are generators of bacteria. They don't like that phrase, but I'm going to use it. Um, when you use synthetics, each one of those pings, everybody who uses synthetics to ping their machines. OK, every time you do that, we spin up a container. It's one for performance, but it's also for security. Because if you hack that container, it's gone within minutes. So it's, um, it's another good reason to use containers. We also, um, our production people created, there's an open source project called Centurion. And what it is is it's a Docker deployment tool. So they learned it was a good idea not to make that all one um, action. But what you want to do is you want to build, build the um, basic AMI that you want to stick up there. or the And then you take the fleet that you're going to deploy several containers at one time. And Centurion does that. It's an open source project. Please take a look at it. Um, we'd like you to use it if you'd like to. And as being an open source project, we always invite you to contribute back if you'd like. So at a high level, what have we learned? The big picture, people are using containers as VM replacements and compute engines or process isolators or whatever you want to call it. Uh, there is this new paradigm of really short-lived containers. And um, you can start thinking about apps as a group of processes to get a job done. And uh, if you think about it, that's kind of back to the future when you built your first application. It was doing one very simple thing. And now you can go back to that. Um, and it's a group of things that um, go together to accomplish a goal. And also that there's going to have to be a new kind of architecture architecture for something that's that ephemeral. You know, People talk about you have to anticipate that something's going to fail. You have to look at it that way. So you're also, as an architect, going to have to have a very close relationship with your developers, or that infrastructure is going to kind of slip right underneath you because it's changing so quickly. And from the operational thing, um, uh, Sean Kane is here. If you get a chance, talk to him, because we did write the book on Docker. Um, you can go to newrelic.com slash docker and get the first three chapters of the ebook for free. Um, one of the things he said they learned from Docker was it was a good move to DevOps for them because it was a way of thinking of their developers actually delivering what's actually going to go out into production and get them more connected to it. So that was it helped culturally in order to do that. So the other thing we learned was monitor images, not individual containers. We're like, hey, we're a monitoring company. We can handle containers. And then you went and looked, and it was a list of 1,000 GUIDs. It's like, that is not helpful for anyone. So now what we've done is we roll that up based on image, because image is roughly equivalent to your application. So it's much easier to look at a group of images, see what their performance are. And then if you need to roll down, uh, drill down to a particular one, you can. And also, um, as always with anything, I think this applies not only to, to technology, but a lot of other things. Start simple. Don't, if you're going to move to the container space, don't s start with a really complex, high throughput app. Start with something simple till you learn the technology. It'll be changing because it's rapidly changing, but it's very interesting. And I encourage you to take a look at the book, talk to some of the new Relic engineers. And another place to get more information about this is our forums. It's an active community. We love to have people out there discuss.newrelic.com. We want to hear from you, give you some answers, and give you an opportunity to share and meet other people in the New Relic community. Thank you. Thank you so much.